Hello and welcome to Refuse. As always, I'm Plume Noir, and here we have the last issue of the Symbiote Spider-Man limited series. Now, I have to be honest, you know, when I've been reviewing these issues, I've been really trying to be careful that I wasn't, I guess you would say, reading them through a nostalgia filter. Because I was reading the Spider-Man books, uh, Amazing, Spectacular, and even Web of Spider-Man when they started that one up uh, back in the 80s. And so this story takes place back during that period, written by Peter David, who was a writer on the on uh, Spectacular back then. And uh, so I've been kind of worried that I might be, and here comes JR. He was just sleeping, I swear to God. Um, Come on, buddy. Um, so I've been worried that I might be looking at it through a nostalgia filter. You know, kind of that whole, oh, I liked it better in my day. Um, but, you know, I don't think that's the case. These books are enjoyable. And one of the things I've done is, you know, kind of looked at it. Um, imagine if, say, Mark Wade went back to, say, Flash or uh, the Justice League post-Grant Morrison. And I don't think he could write stories that were as good as he did back then without making them like champions but then again you know he's had some books that i have complimented of late so um but anyway so i figured okay it would <laughs> just gonna keep pushing jr away i'm just i'm just gonna keep reviewing these the way i have and here we are the last issue of the series and or is it uh uh here comes jr again have to kind of push him away so in the final issue, let's get to the first thing. Um, as you know, uh, Mysterio has a little sliver of the black symbiote costume. He's wearing it, and he's going after Spider-Man. So he and Peter are fighting, and Peter is unconscious. It's a suit that's going after trying to replace, uh, reclaim its uh, missing piece. You know, I, I like how they've been doing these Daily Bugle openings. Really put it back in that period. You know, a mutant massacre begins in the sewers beneath Manhattan, uh-huh, you know, because that was the, pretty much the first crossover storyline with the X-Men titles, and that, wasn't, that was just when it was just X-Men, X-Factor, and New Mutants, although Power Pack and Thor crossed over into it as well. Um, and then, uh, newest private eye in the city, Dakota North, whatever happened to her? She had her own series in the 80s, and I think she made a couple appearances. I have to look into that. I'd like to see Dakota Norris come back. But yeah, I love this costume. <laughs> this uh, symbiote Mysterio costume is really cool. Um, so we're on top of the uh, 7 train here, and uh, Peter is unconscious, and we see that uh, Mysterio is doing the claw things, and you know, going after him, digging right into the roof of the uh, train car. And, uh, yeah, I haven't been down into New York City. I've never ridden on the subways there in other cities. And are, are they both above ground and they go below ground? I I don't know. Or is it just like they have some monorail, some... I'll, I'll be honest, I've done Chicago, I've done Toronto, but I, I haven't done New York, so I don't really know if they go back underground. My <laughs> knowledge of um, of a New York subway system really comes from the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man game, so I guess they do go back uh, down underneath, but that's neither here nor there. So they they're fighting a really good fight here, um, and uh, it's funny because Mysterio's talking to him, and he doesn't realize that Peter just can't hear him. Uh, that all you got? Have to admit, I'm almost disappointed. And he takes uh, Peter's own fist and hits him. Stop hitting yourself, which works well because, as he says, see, you're not the only one that can make stupid jokes. Now, remember, Mysterio has that kind of inferiority complex. He is kind of, he knows he's kind of a joke villain. And uh, when Mysterio is done well, I, I love this character. It's just, he's a goofy looking design. He looks awesome. He's a fun character. You can do so much with him. And that's why I've been loving this story. Um, God, here comes JR again, uh, just circling back around from behind me. So as he's about to land the killing blow, we see Black Cat's um, rope. And she yells to, you know, get your hands off my boyfriend. You know, Spider, are you okay? Spider? Because she always just called him Spider. And she realizes that Peter's not answering. And, uh, you know, Spider, what did he mean by... Oh, and when she sees him go after, he's not answering. Now, I like Greg Land's art. I really do. But some of these... <laughs> when he does some of these... This is one of his stock photos. And it's always... The game with Greg Lanzard. What porn did he trace off of? So, 
that looks like one of them. We get the little continuing story here where uh, Aunt May was supposed to meet up with Peter, but of course Peter's running behind. And although she says something, the waitress says something, um, well, if he's taking the seven, it seems to be running. I can see the tracks from here. But it does have the news report that uh, electrical problems continue to delay the seven train, this time injuring many passengers. So I'm not sure how canon this front page is, but it seems kind of weird when you name that. So, um, so as Spider-Man is uh, trying to fight Mysterio, he's using his hard light projections to just attack from every direction. Um, not something he could really do back then because they didn't really have, you know, hard light wasn't really a, a, a trope at that time. I think it really started with Red Dwarf, which came a little bit after this, uh, season six, if I remember. Um, and then we have uh, Black Cat swinging in to rescue. Um, because of her bad luck, you know, she shorts out his hard light uh, projector and is able to get a hit in. Um, Craig Landart, you gotta love this. You know, we do get the cheesecake here. You know, stuff you can't do these days. And But, you know, if you're an ass man, you do get an ass shot here. Um, which I don't think Twitter will complain about because, see, there's no thigh gap. So, you know, it's all the chubby Twitterettes won't get upset by that. So, um, and here's where Mysterio, being typical Mysterio, is, is so great. He shoots fire at, uh, at Spider-Man and Black Cat. You know, they jump out of the way. But what are the two things that the symbiote is weak to? Sound and fire. So, after he does that, the little fragment of the symbiote costume leaves him, and, of course, leaves him all surprised. It's like, what's happening? Where's it going? You know, was it the fire? It's afraid of fire? And then we just have this cool image where it rejoins the rest of the costume here, and uh, <laughs> Spider-Man just decks him. Again, we still have Greg Land doing that thing where he does the the white part of the black hand, the white part of the fist. It goes instead of it being just the back of the hand, it goes up the wrist. I know it's a minor thing, and I know it's just artistic, you know, um, interpretation. But I always find it distracting whenever he does it. You know, you see it on the cover here, and the pretty much one of the classic Spider-Man poses. You go back, you see this type of pose, but. Um, and Spider-Man is about to, to kill Quentin. And that's when uh, Black Cat comes up, tries to stop him. And, uh, you know, I know you're angry, Peter, but this isn't you. It doesn't always have to be this. Let Mysterio go. Let all this go and let it be us. Together. And Peter just pushes her out of the way and goes back to uh, trying to kill Mysterio. And I gotta stop here really soon. He uses an electrical charge to, you know, basically get Spider-Man off of him, and he takes off. And again, more um, <laughs> cheesecake shots. Nothing wrong with cheesecake, unless you're on Twitter um, or an SJW. Um, but this shock actually kind of wakes Peter up. Um, you know, Felicia, where am I? Oh, now you're feeling talkative? You know, how did I get here? What's happening? Is that Shea Stadium? I guess Mysterio not you stupid, huh? I guess I'm lucky you just happened to be around. And of course, you know he brings up that he did that she ditched him when when she took that part of the costume. But it's not over yet because Mysterio starts using his hard light, uh, um, uh, hard light projectors to project dinosaurs. And again, we get some of these weird faces. Um, and you know, <laughs> as the <clears throat> excuse me, the dinosaurs are rampaging through uh, Shea Stadium. And, uh, but they're still fading out because his thing is, his projector is damaged. Really got to stop here soon. Um, and then, of course, Spider-Man comes back. And, uh, when Mysterio almost gets away from him, Black Cat should have killed him, really. She takes a baseball, a baseball bat to him, clocks him over the head like three times. Not sure how that didn't kill him, but... And then, you know, of course, now the dinosaurs are fading. And, yeah, more of the people here. I swear, like, this guy here, I, I think that's supposed to be someone, but I can't place it. So, yeah, the issue wraps up with, um, you know, Peter reaching out to Aunt May. It's not going very well. It fits in very well with the 
the the series at the time with the Spider-Man books. I'm not going to show the rest of it. However, and there's that stupid ad. I do want to show the last page, which isn't really part of the story, but this made me so happy. Symbio Spider-Man will return, and we have a little picture of the Hobgoblin. Now, in case, you probably know who Hobgoblin is, but in the time when Roger Stern was writing the book, he had a whole storyline, the mystery of the Hobgoblin, was going to explain who Hobgoblin was, and then, like, the book changed hands, and it ended up, they ended up screwing the, po the, the pooch on Hobgoblin, and the storyline ended up being Ned Leeds, and, and then they had to come back and fix it, so, um, and, you know, it was one of those continuing mystery storylines that, uh, just kind of got screwed over at the end. So, um, I'm really, really excited to see this coming, um, and I'm so happy this book. As I've said in previous videos, I want this to be on a, an ongoing. I love this book. I love what Peter David's doing. You know, yeah, it's kind of an untold tales, but why can't stories set in the modern day be this good? You know, I in a way, I kind of wish... During Secret Wars, they had gone back and did some type of retcon and got rid of all the Civil War, um, you know, pretty much stuff from, like, Civil War on, you know, in all the books. and kind of started back from there. Um, just my opinion of the Marvel Universe. I think post-Civil War is when it kind of got the whole weird political, you know, how they're supposed to be almost like uh, when they were trying to make them into... Uh, you know, registered super teams, and yeah, it's, I think it was kind of simpler back then, I don't know, it's it's kind of a weird state that it is now, but I love this book, and I'm so happy to see it coming back, and JR is just done chilling over there, so he's finally good, so yeah, I, I guess I gotta do this, Hank, so we do the clock, 12 o'clock, love this book, um, now I'm gonna be honest, I did not buy much this week, so I might go through, um, some of the books I picked up the past couple of weeks and I haven't done videos on, like Invisible Woman and stuff. So I might go ahead and circle back around and doing that. But yeah, this great book and I'm happy to see it coming back. So anyway, that's it. If you haven't picked this up, go. I'm sure it'll be out in the trade. But pick up these issues. Pick up this issue. Good series. No political stuff. No, it's just basically we have a story. We're telling the story. And the interesting thing is we find that Mysterio knew that the costume was alive before Peter did. So it's a, a nice little touch. So anyways, as always, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.